Welcome to What's Happening. In this regular roundup, Real Media and Phoenix Media Cooperative team up to provide unashamedly internationalist and subversive news, highlighting the work of people who are organizing to forge a better world. This week, we bring you a festive In Case You Missed It special, a quick look back with some updated news at some of the stories we've covered in the 10 shows so far. Back in September, Paralympian gold medalist James Brown was sentenced to a year in prison to serve a minimum of six months for climbing on top of an aeroplane at London City Airport and holding it up for an hour. He wanted to highlight the emergency of climate and ecological breakdown, and so he was targeting the mainly wealthy frequent flyers who use London Airport, disproportionately causing carbon emissions whilst least likely to suffer from its effects. Over 80% of the world's people, they've, they've never even stepped foot on an aircraft. Just 1% of the population create 50% of the demand. Putting someone in prison for it, I guess, an unlawful protest is, is a harsh reality of, of where, where this government and I guess other governments are in this. They're, they're not listening. They're not listening to children. They're not listening to protesters. They're not listening to ordinary people. We've just had this report come out um, but 10,000 uh, children surveyed, 60% of them despair at the, the state of, of affairs in their future. And if people haven't felt that anxiety yet, then they're still in denial. That's the reality of the situation. That judge had a lot of options open to him and he chose the harshest one, I think, as an example, to deter people from protesting, sadly. There have been numerous airport cases in the past. None of those have, have uh, ended up with immediate custodial sentences. Uh, and we'll be challenging whether the judge has approached this sentencing exercise in the right way. So we'll be going to the Court of Appeal and saying that the judge has got the balance wrong on this. After three months, his appeal against conviction and sentencing was finally heard and he was released on bail last week pending further judgment from the High Court. Climate change also featured in a court case at the start of December. Three young people are trying to take the UK government to court over lack of climate action. We interviewed Aditola and Jerry, who told us how climate breakdown is already affecting their families. I've seen videos being sent to me on a weekly basis from my family in Jamaica of landslides, exacerbating weather conditions, lack of livelihoods being able to be uh, transferred from one to another because the land will not allow it anymore. I'm from the Fanti and Gardangme people who are around the middle regions of West Africa. Traditionally subsistence, fish farming communities, their coasts are now being erased and eroded en masse. And tidal waves have become the norm and flooding is now becoming the norm even in the city centre of, of Accra in Ghana. Now that doesn't include the pollution of the river Densu, of the river Ankobra, where so many of our communities live and they are now unable to drink the clean fresh water that they were drinking before. That doesn't include the, the dispossession of their lands because of new mines that are being built to extract bauxite and now lithium, which has just been found in the country. And it doesn't include the violent repression that the UK, the UK taxpayer currently contributes to the training of militaries in Ghana, who have been killing investigative journalists, killing environmental activists and earth defenders as recently as in the last few weeks. This is the reality of these people defending our right to life and family life and to not be discriminated against, and yet they're still discriminated in a way where repression is part of that discrimination constantly every day in the global south. What's starting to finally reach home for the ordinary peoples of this part of the world is that these institutions, which have failed us and had nothing but contempt for our peoples for centuries, have that same contempt for the working classes, for the ordinary peoples, and anyone who is interested in justice. Yesterday, the High Court refused their application despite accepting their claim that without changes to global finance, the world may be on track for a temperature increase in the region of 3.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. The three young people will be appealing the decision in the Supreme Court. At the end of November, the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women was marked in London by a vigil outside New Scotland Yard, honouring girls and women who have been killed by men. There are also marches and protests across the world. La Via Campesina, the international peasant movement, has been championing this cause for many years, and they marked the day with the launch of a graphic book, The Path of Peasant and Popular Feminism. Amongst the themes explored in the powerful illustrations is women's role in the struggle for food sovereignty. We explored this theme further in our interview with Sarah Calloway from Women of Colour 
in global women's strike. We're demanding a care income for people, all genders who look after people, the land, the soil and the planet. Because very often people who are working the land are under attack by security forces, by militaries, by armies, by police. There's a big focus on carbon, but in fact the big issue is the soil. You know, the soil ha has got to be rebuilt and regenerated and indigenous farmers across the world are doing that and many of them are women 70 percent of subsistence farmers are women but that's not getting hardly any focus in andhra pradesh in india the government is backing a program and they want payment for farmers who are changing back using traditional methods and what they call a soil sponge where you you rebuild the land and they're having fantastic results. So we're going to be talking about that here today and also at COP26. Insulate Britain polarised opinions when they blockaded motorways and major roads over the last few months. But rather than arrest them through the justice system, the government decided to use private injunctions. The government's approach had the effect of delaying any prison sentences until after the COP26 talks, while appearing tough for the right-wing media. The police, they are as perplexed as us as to why we are not in prison. You know, they keep saying that we're just pestering ordinary people, but the truth is Pretty Patel could have taken us off the streets by now. We think it's possibly because COP is going on and it would not look good to have political prisoners at a time where Boris Johnson is trying to pretend he's uh, leading the world in the right direction. So they'd rather we annoyed normal people than made him look a bit bad. We interviewed barrister Paul Powsland about the use of injunctions and heard from activists just before their sentencing at the High Court. Now the key question is, do they grant injunctions to stop the illegal discharge of sewage into our rivers? No, they do not. Do they do it to stop the unlawful levels of air pollution in our cities, killing tens of thousands of people a year? No, they do not. They do it for peaceful protest. It's inherently undemocratic, four months in prison for the same offence. And so what we see is the judiciary have effectively entered the political game, they've entered the political field. And I think now they are fair game as a result for political critique of their role and what they're doing. In the UK, we have a rich history of people standing up using civil disobedience. That means challenging the laws that are there at the time to try and achieve change. I personally have been in the road seven times. I know friends who have been in the road 18 times at this point, and there's not been a sig single criminal proceeding against us. The whole injunction thing just looks like like a privatisation of the legal system. It's an essential part of protest that people are disrupted and ultimately we want to protect and save those people. We're not trying to just annoy them or be an inconvenience. We want to protect them and their children's future. After sentences of several months imprisonment were handed down to nine activists in November, a solidarity march ended in more than 100 arrests after traffic was stopped on Lambeth Bridge and Vauxhall Cross. This month, similar protests calling for citizens' assemblies have been carried out in Italy, with major roads in Rome brought to a standstill repeatedly over the past couple of weeks by a group calling themselves the last generation citizens' assemblies now. Despite injunctions and the risk of prison and high fines, protests have halted traffic nine times in 11 days. Back in November, we first reported on the expanding gig economy and the grassroots union fight back against low income and poor conditions. We highlighted the Stuart delivery riders in South Yorkshire who were threatening to go on strike after facing a 24% pay cut. And earlier this month, they interrupted delivery services across the county for McDonald's and Just Eat. Now that strike has turned into the longest gig economy strike in UK history and it remains strong with a strike fund set up to receive donations. Yesterday, protesters stormed the Just Eat HQ in London in solidarity with Yorkshire couriers. That was just a taste of some of the stories we've covered since we started this new weekly roundup in October. You can check out the playlist and subscribe to our channel on YouTube, somewhere around here. And also please remember it takes a lot of time and effort to bring you truthful reporting. So please consider making a donation or better still a monthly subscription to help us bring you more news in 2022. Next week will be a short review of the year. So please check that out. Have a great winter for however you choose to do that and remember to like, subscribe and share, it really helps us out. Have a good one.